<laughs> Johanna, you did mention uh, air traffic control that you educate and motivate. That's yeah. Uh, you, that's something that you do constantly on your Instagram page. That is Voice in a Pilot's headset. Yeah. You also have a, a YouTube channel that yeah. y- you try and put out as uh, much as content as possible. That's. Yeah. Uh, That's how I also got to learn a few things and yeah. you can tell you're very passionate about this. I do, yeah, I love it. You do do speak about it uh to uh young children as well who want to get into it and this is uh the, I know this because I saw this clip on the TEDx uh, uh talk uh talk that yeah. happened in Gems New Millennium School. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Um so with the Gems New Millennium School um it was like a domino effect with how I got that opportunity in the first place and it was kind of like right place right time so I went to a networking event I met this awesome lady called Zenifer mm-hmm. and uh she reached out to me after she met me at this networking event and she's like oh I'm working freelance like I want to do an interview about you for a, um I think it was a magazine or a news article I can't remember now um so she came to my house we did the interview I had the photo shoot with my dog It was great. Mm-hmm. His name is Peanut Butter and he's been with me. He is actually my part of my edge and my emotional support to make him get in air traffic control because I adopted him the day I found out that I got into the air traffic program. So he's my ATC baby. Nice. Yeah. So um I met her. She came did the interview with me and she really loved my vibe like, you know, we just got along so well. and uh, her child goes to Gems New Millennium School mm-hmm. and she nominated my name for um their wellness conclave so i want to give a speech about how to beat procrastination and uh, i'm going to tell us more about this after yep. yes so uh i want to do a talk about how to beat procrastination and uh i remember i procrastinated so hard before actually doing the speech because i had to come up with content about procrastination and i was procrastinating about it like the irony <laughs> So I I googled procrastination and I remembered to I decided that I will include in my speech that I procrastinated about talking about procrastination mm-hmm. because I want the kids to know that we're all human and even me who has achieved what I have achieved you know uh I procrastinate and I proudly do so. Uh so I included that in my talk and the kids loved how honest I was. I was very uh I feel like my online persona because I am teaching people people don't get to see like I can be fun. So they met me and they're like, "Oh my gosh, like we love you." I'm like, "Good for you and for me, <laughs> I suppose." You know, there were a lot of girls that came up to me and um I just told them, I said, "I gave everyone my business card and it had my socials and my number on there." And I told them, I said, "Listen, just message me." And that's the reason why I only have two social media platforms. So Uh I told him I was like I'll be your big sister like I'll help you out. I wish I had somebody like me when I was growing up so I'll be that to the next generation. So they loved that so much and they called me back to the school through Instagram. They're like, "Hey, Jehana, like can we invite you to do this TEDx talk?" I'm like, "What? Are you kidding me? Of course." And I was so happy and pleased that they would choose me. I was flattered if anything. I was like I felt honored, you know. and uh, those kids did a very good job with the TEDx honestly i've been to adult um i've been to events that were conducted by adults and the kids did a much better job at organizing and i'm being fully honest about that <laughs> they did an excellent job and i told them repeatedly and i will send them this podcast when you put this in there to let them know how good they were please do um so that's how i got into um uh doing that speech and doing that talk and uh, i had to think of a way to explain what air traffic control is cuz even my mother to this day doesn't know what it is mm-hmm. my sister as i mentioned she doesn't exactly understand what i'm doing so i'm like how am i going to teach an auditorium full of children what air traffic control is and make an impact so they don't forget and at the same time i was watching spiderman coincidentally and i love marvel mm-hmm. and uh, i was watching ned like his best friend um he was like oh can i be the guy in the chair and Spider-Man agreed and he's like okay so he sat there with this computer screen he's got a headset on with uh, a mic and he's telling him where it's safe for him to go and i had a light bulb moment and i was like oh my goodness spider-man is trending right now cuz the new one just came out and i'm going to tell these kids that i am ned that's it so that's how i introduced cuz i took that as a moment to educate the crowd about what air traffic control is so they understood exactly what i do and then tell them how i got there So the analogy goes and I'll take this as a moment to teach you and whoever's tuning in about what air traffic control is. 
So we'll go with the Spider-Man analogy because that's what I got for the kids and it helps adults as well. It helps me. Yeah. So Spider-Man has his best friend, Ned, and he calls himself the guy in the chair. And he watches over Spider-Man on his computer screen and he speaks to him through a headset, providing him with instructions to let him know where it's safe to go from the bad guys. For air traffic control, we don't speak to Spider-Man. We speak to pilots. So we watch them on a big radar screen and we can see where everybody's going and flying in the sky and we tell them where it's safe for them to go. We even tell them what altitude to climb and descend to. We tell them what speed to fly. We tell them which direction to even turn in, which flight path to follow. Every single detail, we tell them how to fly in the sky to make sure they stay separated from other aircraft. So we're speaking to multiple pilots at the same time, telling them where it's safe for them to go. And then that's basically what air traffic control is. When I have more adult crowds, I tell them um, it's like being the Google Maps voice, but for pilots in the sky. And I tell them where it's safe for them to go. And I have a, vis I have a full picture of a radar with uh, live movements of how the aircraft are going. It shows me what altitude they're at, what speed they're flying, what aircraft type they are, because imagine in terms of speed, right? Let's say you have a Lamborghini, you know that's fast. Mm -hmm. And let's say the Lamborghini is behind a bus, you know, that's going to be slow. So imagine that with air traffic control, it's similar. You know, if you, can, if you keep a fast aircraft behind a slow aircraft, you have to make sure they're flying the same speed so they stay separated from each other. Right. So this is just one example of the many things I have to do when I go to work. So it's like playing a video game with no game over option and the stakes are human life, but worth it. It's so worth it. You feel amazing knowing that you've achieved what you've achieved at the end of every shift. I, for me personally, the job satisfaction is really high because you're impacting so many lives at, a, at the same time. You know, People board a flight and they don't realize that there are people out there making sure that you get from point A to point B safely across the planet. So yeah, and I'm proud to be a part of that. And I feel like that's the patriotic side of me. I literally protecting the skies of my country when I go to work, along with the other air traffic controllers that are in the room with me. And I, on behalf of everyone who's flying this airspace, thank you so much. You're Joanna. so welcome. It's not easy, but it's worth it. How long do you work? How many hours do you work? In a day? It's an eight hour shift okay. and uh, you have set breaks. So it helps with fatigue management because right. it's a lot of concentration for long periods of time, mm -hmm. like an hour and a half at the max two hours where you're sitting and you're working uh, air traffic session. Right. Okay, that gives us a very good insight of what actually happens because we always know the pilots and, and the air hostess do take care of us in, in the flights. But yeah. this is a very good insight. Thank you so much for that. Uh, 